Well, good morning and praise the Lord. We're glad that you're joining us again today on our journey of Disciples Principles of Faith. We've been working our way through various theological concepts and ideas that the scriptures give to us. And we're going to move on to chapter two in Disciples Principles of Faith, teaching the whole area of who God is. Now, I was thinking about this the other day that I want you to know we're not going into this and theological teaching in a deep way. That's why we're calling it principles, because we're pulling out principles within a doctrine that I think that are helpful to our daily walk in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we're glad that you've joined us and uh, we pray that as we get into the word, the word will get into us. And that we will grow from it. You know, there's nothing that waters the soul more than the Word of God. Amen. So thank you for joining us across Canada. Hi, Alice. And also around the world, like Mazul and others, Ezekiel from Africa. I mean, the list goes on. And I will always hear about it when I don't mention people's names. But... We love you and thank you for joining us so faithfully. And feel free to use what you hear in any way of sharing a testimony or also in the whole area of teaching others, helping to equip others. And so we want to encourage you, if you need more tools or more things to help equip, go to our um, Discipleship Empowerment website and you will find more books and things that you can download there for free. And so, but today we're going to get into the principles of faith, this whole area of principles of faith concerning the teaching of God. And we're going to move right over into Exodus. Now, when we talk about the teaching of God or the names of God, which is probably a little bit easier to explain, I know... Uh, in our other little Ezra book, we call the Disciples God, a study on the name of God or on the names of God. And I think that's important to realize we're not going to spend, uh, you know, volumes of time uh, looking at God. But we can see from the names of God, his character and his nature. Uh, so we're not going to try to, you know, expound everything that we could concerning who God is, and I'm not here to try to convince you whether there is a God or not. I'm walking with the believers. This is the disciples where we're trying to analyze and look at uh, the various character and nature of who God is and how that relates to us as believers in Jesus Christ. Well, there's probably no better place to start to when it comes to names of God is to go over into Exodus chapter 3, verses 14 to 15. And there we have this encounter between God and Moses. And I think that's a good place to start. For it says, God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God furthermore said to the Moses, Thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial name to all generations. So Moses gets to understand very clearly, or at least the door gets open to him to begin to understand that God's name is a name that is there forever. And it is there as a memorial to learn from, to remember from, from generation to generation. See, the, the key to being a strong disciple is to walk, is for us to get to know God personally. And to know somebody personally, it, it, it's good to know them by their name. And to enter into that personal relationship when you use one another's names and, and by understanding 
the person's name, you begin to understand a lot of time the character and nature. It's not so, so much nowadays, but back in the olden times, even in the uh, after the death of Christ and before the death of Christ, the choosing of the name was so important because often it would show the character and nature of the people. And so you have this, again, even in the Christmas story, where you got uh, Zacharias, who cannot speak until he writes on a tablet, who the name of his son shall be, and his name shall be known as John. And then you get later on, when you have Mary and Joseph, the tradition would be that, you know, the first son would probably be named after Joseph. But they give him the name Jesus, as the angel told them to do, which means salvation. And so, names were a lot more important. I don't know if you've ever looked into your name, um, but I have looked into my name. My name is equal to the name of Saul, or I should say my middle name is Paul, which is like Saul, which means little one. Um, I'm not so little anymore, kind of got big over the years, but, and, and then you look at the name James, which means, um, supplanter or, um, trying to think of the better way to one who s almost sneaks around or quietly moves around. <laughs> and the, the, and again, there is so much description when it comes, you can get a book of names and they'll tell you what this means. Uh, um, but it does, may not mean that at all, you know, in the whole area of, of, um, so James and Jacob, you got the Greek and the Hebrew, and you got Paul and Saul, those kinds of names. But we're going to look at the names of God. And from the names of God, we get his nature and his character. And often his names are compounded together. We miss that a lot in the New Testament, you know, where we see Lord Jesus Christ. You know, and we don't understand that we just say, well, yeah, he's my Lord Jesus Christ. But are you understanding what it means to have him as Lord? Because even when Jesus was talking to the Pharisees and Sadducees about the, the wise man and the foolish man, it starts off, why do you call me Lord, Lord? And do not even serve him as Lord. Don't even believe him as Lord. Why do you call him the Christ? which means the Messiah, the Anointed One. Why do you call him Jesus, which means salvation? And so we, we don't often see how these names are compounded together and, and give us a whole deep theological understanding to the character and nature of God. So when we study over the next probably nine or ten days, uh, this whole area of the names of God, we're going to look at him as a provider, as a healer. His one name is a provider. His another name is a healer, a banner, a sacrifice, a peace, a Lord, righteousness, a shepherd, an ever-present help. These are just some of the names we're going to pick out of the Hebrew scriptures and begin to see the character and nature of of who God is. Now, the first list of names are are uh, used throughout the Bible multiple times, and they can be used by putting them together. But again, these names give identity to who God is and and how He's speaking to us. So, when you see the name like God or Lord or I am or Jehovah, when you see these names, He is speaking to us from that position from that name's position do you understand what i'm saying you know i can say this is james paul speaking to you now i am speaking to you on behalf of james paul this is who i am this is my name and you could go away and say i heard something from james paul today well it's the same thing when when god 
introduces himself to Moses. He uses a variety of names. In Exodus 3, 14 and 15, we have the name I am who I am. Then we just have it also used as I am. Then we have the name God shows up. We have the name Lord shows up. And he is saying to Moses, this is my name forever. Or you can say, these are my names forever. Because God doesn't change. And so when we look at his name, we see the character of who he is, his character and nature. And he's trying to reveal that to us so that through relationship, we can become, as it were, attached to that and be able to grow in our Christian walk. So that one of the first names that we want to look at is the name L, E-L. Um, and L is, is translated as God. But the word God, this is again the meaning behind words, often are so important. We read through the Bible and we just say, you know, Almighty God or, you know, God this, God that, and not realize how it is speaking to us and and again because we don't have the hebrew context in front of us some of us that uh, can have a bible where it has the hebrew words underneath you will get a chance to understand what the differentiation that is going on between the different names so here l which means god means mighty strong prominent you know, means mighty, strong, and prominent. And it's used about only 250 times during the Bible. And it's, a, and it's a, mostly used a lot in the Old Testament. But if you were to follow it through, okay, because then you could translate, if you knew which God, what L that it was from the Hebrew, you could translate, it, instead of saying God, the one, you could say the mighty one, the strong one, the prominent one. And that's important. See the, see how that in already changes the context of the scripture when we see that. Uh, then we move on to another name, which is used 2,570 times. So this one is 250 times there about. The next one is 2,570 times. And it's the name Elohim. And so we got El, which is E-L, then Elohim, which is the plural of El, which is E-L-O-H-I-M. It's the plurality of God. And it's indicating the Trinity, the idea of the greatness and glory, the creative, the governing power, the omnipresence, the sovereignty of God. But it, it shows the plurality of God. And see... Again, because we don't, in English, uh, differentiate between the two ways that this word God is used, whether it's singular or plural, sometimes the context will show us. But we miss out on who's speaking. Is God just speaking to us as God, the God, the one who is mighty and strong? Or is he speaking to us in the context of the scripture as the trinity god the plurality of god you know who was there from the beginning of his idea of greatness and and his creativity his governing power all these things so it indicates plurality but in that indication of plurality we have the idea of of unity and harmony that relates to his work. So when you see Elohim, you could think of the, the, the Trinity of God, the fullness of God speaking to us. He's speaking to us not only as the Father, but he's speaking to us as the Son, and he's speaking to us as the Holy Spirit. And we're going to talk more about that later uh, as we look at the idea of the Trinity. The second name, so the first name is El or Elohim. The second name, uh, which is um, Yahweh, is translated Lord or also God. But here it's a little different. It kind of stands out 
in the Hebrew Scriptures and in our English Bible, at least in the New King James and the King James, where you will see the word LORD all capitalized, L-O-R-D. Again, that is Jehovah or God. And that name means to be or being, to live, uh, to live life, to be self-existence. And you know what? It's used over 6,823 times in the Old Testament. And it's the God of revelation. He's revealing. And the interesting thing, you know, when I studied this in the Ketchin language, this almighty God, uh, to be Jehovah, it means that he's always been, always will be, and always is. He never changes, never moves, never in a sense of, of um, his presence is always there. And I like that. He, you know, he's right here, right now. His eternal presence was in the past. His eternal presence is today. And his eternal presence is tomorrow. And as Lord, it gets translated, as I say, to be. He's the ruler over. But to, to get it even a little bit more interesting, it can also, when you look at the word Lord, and you can see Yahweh, Yahweh is also connected to the idea of I am. I know I'm giving you a lot of interesting things. Hopefully I'm not confusing you, but the idea of I am is just like what he said to, to Moses, I am who I am. In my broken street English, I would call this a double whammy <laughs> or a double hip. I am who I am. And the idea is this I am is the first person from the Hebrew verb to be. All that you need him to be, I am. Do you need him as a healer? I am. Do you need him as a provider? I am. Do you need him as wisdom? I am. Do you need him as savior? I am. Do you need him as deliverer? I am. Whatever whatever situation you find yourself in, I am. And this is why when when God speaks to Moses to go tell the people of Israel who've been in bondage for four years, just tell them I am has sent you. Because they had stopped believing in all the ability of God. They had stopped believing in the fullness of God. We are in the same state nowadays around the world. We have stopped believing in Jehovah, the great I am, the one who is, is to be. You know, um, and that's why it's a, it gets extended. I am who I am. It's the eternal presence. And it's interesting you may not have caught it, but here is he gives, I am who I am. This is why the Pharisees and the Sadducees got so bent out of shape with Jesus. Because only in the Gospel of John do we have seven times where Jesus calls himself different things concerning I am. And when we get into the doctrine of Jesus, we'll look at those. But why they were so upset because Jesus was making himself equal to God, which he is. He was also making himself equal or that he was back there in the time of Moses. That when God spoke to Moses, I am who I am. At that moment, Jesus was also speaking to him. So we Sometimes Colwyn and I have this conversation when we talk about the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We put them in the three different boxes and we keep them all separated. But that's not the truth. The truth, because we've just learned that Elohim is the plural form of God. It represents the fullness of who God is. And so this I am represents the eternal presence in the past, present, and future. You know, he was there before creation and he will be there after the book of Revelation. And so the idea of um, 
uh, Yehovah and I am are brought together. So are you following me along? I hope I'm not. So you got El and Elohim, which is used in the word God. You got Yehovah, which tr is often translated as the word Lord or God, all capitalized. Then you got the word I am, which is which comes from that idea of Lord, and it represents Jesus Christ. But then we go into a third name, uh, which could be very interesting to you, and and uh, we don't notice it, but there is um, Adonai. Adonai is another name, and the only way we can find it in our King James and New King James Bible is that the word Lord is capitalized only with the L. The first letter of the word Lord is capitalized, and the other three letters are not. At that moment, we are now talking about God as Adonai. And this means master, sir, lord, owner. And it's used about 350 times. And it also confirms the idea of the Trinity. You know, the circle best represents God because there is, there is no beginning and there's no end. But also I find that the circle represents God so beautifully because God is all around us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We're in the midst of that circle. And we will see his amazing fullness. And so at a nine, if you were when you go back and you read your Old Testament scriptures, unfortunately as you move into the New Testament, the Greek scriptures don't use this way of of flagging the different words. Or what's going on. But if you look through your Old Testament. Especially in Genesis. You will see the transition of these names. Work their way through. All the way from Genesis to Exodus. To this time of Exodus 3. And so if you were to go into Exodus 3. 14 and 15. You would see the Lord. Which is all capitalized here. The God of your fathers. And then. I don't know if I can quickly find it for you. I usually even underline it in my Bibles, and I didn't put it in my notes today. But let me just see if I can quickly find a reference um, to that change. Because often it is thought that when you, when you see the name Lord in its smaller form with capital versus small letter, this would actually represent uh, Jesus speaking to the people again i probably will have to uh, get back to you on that but you can go through the scriptures and find that particular change when it changes from uh the capital one letter to the individually small letters i'm looking at here i see the word lord um all capitalized quite often but I'm just, give me a minute here. Um, I may find it and I may not right away. Looks like they're all, the ones I'm looking at now are all capitalized. But God will allow you to, as you go through, and again, you will be able to see uh, these changes, how God is trying to speak to his people. And so when we are looking at these names, it gives the idea of the character of God and his nature and how he wants to minister to us. So this Ananine here, you know, when we see it, we see uh, the nature, this part of the nature where it's the Lord's Lord as Lord or owner. And it's interesting as we go into the New Testament, how he becomes our Lord and Savior. So these names, the, just these few names. I mean, we aren't going. We haven't even got. We're just introducing the overall names. But when we take these names as El and Elohim and begin to research them, and look at the names of Jehovah and I Am, and then begin to bring it together as Adonai, we can see how God is beginning to speak to us in a variety of different ways. And it's important that we understand that and we grasp that as we look into the scripture. 
this is this would be a great time if we had a a class where we could interact because I know you probably have got many questions but the I am especially opens the door for the believer to add any descriptive words which after the title that's what we said remember I said I am the healer or I am the deliverer or I am the mediator or I am the savior these are things and so as a disciple, as we get opening up this introduction to our new chapter concerning the principles of faith, the teaching on God, we we need to to somehow fundamentally grasp these interchanges of the name and how they're there to show various character and nature of God. So, Remember I said we're trying to get into a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And and uh, it's like you're in a room of almost three different people, but they're all one. And they are coming to you from different contexts. They're coming to you by, okay, when I come to you as this name, this is how I am speaking to you at this moment. This is how I am entering into a relationship with you at this moment. And then when you grasp that, you'll be able to see what God is trying to uh, portray, what he is trying to get across, and why he's saying in Exodus 3.14, where he says, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, I am has sent me to you. And so they would get that. They would get the use of that name. And God furthermore said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, The Lord, this is all capitalized, Jehovah, the God, okay, the God of all creation, the Almighty One, who was the Almighty One of Abraham, who was the Almighty One of Isaac, who was the Almighty One of Jacob, is now coming to you. Because they believe very strongly in heritage. They believe very strongly in the descend descending of the power and the anointing of God working through people. And he said, tell them that the God, the Lord of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has sent me to you. So it's like saying, if you got a problem with Moses coming to you and speaking this, go take it up with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If you don't want to believe me, go take it up with Abraham, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I didn't want to be here, Moses said. I didn't want to be doing this. I didn't want I wanted to stay in the wilderness. But I know the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Lord, the Jehovah has called me to call you out of your bondage into the land flowing with milk and honey. And that's why he said, this is my name forever. Are we the forever part? Have we been around, you know, for generations after generations? For this is my name. What name? Jehovah, the great I am. And not only is this my name forever, but this is my memorial name. This is what's going to be put up that I want everyone from all generations to know and to understand who I am. And so today, as we begin the introduction, we only got halfway through the introduction, but I think that's a good place to stop right now. To understand that God wants to use us and that names and titles reveal character and nature and we will see this as we go through these next number of weeks looking at the names of God how he wants to come and how he will meet you in the place that you're at how he will meet you with his specific name saying that that character that need that you have I am and I will show you he says, that I am that I am. Isn't that wonderful? Let's pray. Father, we ask, O oh Lord, that you would just guide and direct as we begin to open up this whole section about your names. 
Oh, Father, I pray that somehow we will grasp the names as part of your character, as part of the nature of who you are. And, Father, that we would just come to you in a way, Lord, as I, I look at these names again, as El, as the Mighty One, strong and prominent. Lord, as we look at you as in the plural form, as the one who created and governs and empowers, the omnipresent, the sovereign one. Lord, as we look at you as the Jehovah, that we will see that you've always been and you always will be. And self-existence, Lord, that you are contained completely in who you are. And Lord, as we look at you as the Adonai, the one who wants to be the Lord of our lives, the owners, that we give up ourselves and we allow you to reign in our lives. And so we thank you now and we ask, Lord, as we continue to study, Lord, that you would reveal the fullness of your character and your nature into our hearts, knowing, Lord, that as we understand you and go into a deeper relationship, you will then empower us in a greater way to be overcomers as we journey through this world. And we give you thanks now in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Hoping that opened up your eyes for a few more things. And again, feel free to message me on the side and things like that. We can't answer everything. But today I hope that we've opened up your eyes to see God in a whole new way. And that is sometimes if you get into the word and let the word get into you, you're going to see things that you never thought was there because our English doesn't do sometimes a very good job of defining and explaining our God. Great is our God. Amen. Love you and Lord willing. We hope to see you again tomorrow. Bye bye for now.